Hi everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Dragway Memories. This week we got lots to show you as usual. We're going to start with a little action from Detroit Dragway. Welcome everyone again. Detroit Dragway, shot by the late Ross Martin. Happy to have this footage. There's Big Mike Burkhart in the Camaro, Paul Stefanski in the Mustang, nitro burning cars a pair as they get ready to do the pre-race ritual with a bunch of VHT down there. This is 1971 at the Dirty D as they called it. Yep. Detroit Dragway built in 1959. What? All the way until 1996. Yeah, but they built it for the Nationals, did they not, they, basically? Yeah, the first two years were uh, NHRA sanctioned. Yep. Gil Cohn owned the track and then after that it was just a hodgepodge, mostly AHRA as they bucked against NHRA. Brought in some very big shows at the Dirty D. The pits were full of dirt and sand and all that stuff and it was just a mess. You could see clumps of dirt on the tires. It got its nickname, honestly. Burglar and Proc. Big Al Burglar, he was from... Did oh, you look oh, at Connie oh. Kalita? Slides her sideways. No flies on Connie, he just drives back, her back. Wrong way. And he'll get her lined up. Nitro burning funny cars, 1971 action. Connie being a native Michiganer. Ready for the race. Proc. And Burglar, also natives of Michigan. So this was right in their backyard. Looks like the Vega took that one. Same with this car, another Michigan area car. The Color Me Gone, Roger Lindemood. Roger uh, spent some time in the earlier days running for the uh, Plymouth team of the Golden Commandos and the Dodge team of the Ram Chargers. Larry Christofferson in the Dick Harrell Vega Nitro Burning. Look at the no front overhang on that car whatsoever. And the the mood. Vega. Vega moving hard. Who's it going to be at the top end? We don't know. Carl Holbrook in the Instant Action. Cobra Jet. Cobra Jet Mustang. This is right in his backyard as the uh, Michigan native as well. And look at this. Oh, look at there's a pace car in the other lane making short work of it. Of course, that Challenger's getting all kinds of squirrely. Squirrely. Pace car for the win. I grabbed the wrong gear. Larry Christofferson. They don't do Smokies like they used to, no, Billy. No, they certainly don't. Track prep being what they are, clutch settings being what they are today. The gold digger. The gold digger, Gary Bolger. Bud Richter Automotive out of the Chicago area, not too far from Michigan. That's Nitro Funny Car Action at its best. Big Mike Burkhardt, he was a big man, six, six something over 300 pounds manhandling these things. Connie Kalita, who of course needs no introduction. Native of Michigan. Now owns one giant empire of aircraft. Kalita Air. Hazing the tires. And when you look at the tires of what these cars ran, man oh man, I wouldn't put a bracket car on such a small tire nowadays. But they were the biggest what they had back then. Traction at the start always an issue. No track prep. No track no prep. No concrete. No concrete either. These guys uh, barnstorming like they did. They soon figured out what they could and couldn't do on the various uh, hayseed drag strips that they went across. And I'll tell you. They saw all kinds of this. This track was initially built to run four wide, and they could run stockers four wide, although uh, later on it became just a two-lane only track. But there was two Christmas trees at one point at this track. Stone Woods and Cook Tinkerbell, and this car was run by Kenny Safford out of Chicago. Burned it up. Yeah, that car no longer exists for sure. How far back he sits. And this is Arnie the Farmer Beswick in a borrowed car. He uh, synonymous with Pontiac Racing. 
nitro cars specifically, although he did dabble in some uh, uh, match racing stuff uh, later on in the years. He still does some match racing in a pro modified style 64 GTO. Got burnt very badly in one of them actually. Lost quite a bit of his old nostalgia stuff and uh, his big barn that he had, had it all stored and it burnt up and Terrible lost thing, yeah. quite a bit of irreplaceable Pontiac. hammy Pontiac parts and from Mickey Thompson, all kinds of good stuff was lost in that fire. Sit down, buddy. Roger Linamood again and the color me gone. Always a nice clean operation. Yeah, he used to run factory cars, factory AFXers. And there's Big Mike Burkhart in the Scotty's Auto, 70 and a half Camaro. Ramp trucks behind. They used to chase them down track. Linda Mood, clean and gone. In our last pro comp piece for a while, we're going to go to modified next. We feature Peter Plipolov. Comp series racer Pete Plipov. Here in the uh, very early stages of his career, this is a Lakewood style chassis dragster running in B dragster with a, a Buick nail head for power. In the background there is Ron Sutherland and is now C Dragster, used to be a D Dragster six cylinder car. Later on Pete, there's Pete with some winner circle trophies with his B Dragster. You can see that uh, it's quite advanced for the time frame and uh, you can still Buick nail head, still injected on gas. Moving to his next dragster, which was uh, more of a home-built machine, and uh, you can see that it's got the bright orangey-red paint on it. This is a 289. Uh, had quite a bit of work done to the motor, but uh, nothing that an average guy couldn't afford. The first style of Zumi headers and some very tall injector stacks on this version. And we moved, you can see that he's uh, lowered the injector stack somewhat, still with the same style of header, the beautiful crowd here at Dragway Park, as uh, Pete always was after that fine line of power and traction. You can see him hazing the tires. That would have been about the extent of what he would want back then. He always gauged his power to track conditions, and that served him very well. Here we are later on. And it tells the story which he lost to the Thumper D Dragster in the final round, still with the uh, early stages of Zumi headers. 302, 289 board out just a little bit on gas. Here we have some more modern type Zumi headers as we transitioned into 1971. And you can see that uh, through 1972 he ran this car very competitively and found himself in the final round on more than one occasion. Here he is at TID, Toronto International Dragway, outside of Georgetown. Just again, you can see that he's hazing the tires just a little bit off the start. Tried to minimize that, used the brake handle quite a bit, he tells us, and he became quite good at it. Here is it again with some uh, later model tires on it. And again, the picture tells the story of another runner-up in competition eliminator with his 302 Ford. Getting towards the end of his career in drag racing. Pete was in drag racing for about seven years and you can see him pushed back in the seat hard. Again, just a slight haze off the tires at Dragway Park. And here we go, he's ex constantly experimenting as most racers did. Now he's got some modern drag 500s for tires and some collector style exhaust headers. Moving to the final incarnation of Pete Racing, you can see he's still with these uh, collector style headers and moved to a single four barrel 750 as Econo Dragsters made their way onto the scene and this was a C Econo Dragster with 302 cubic inches of Ford power.
Okay, here's some great footage from the Lane family. Check it out. Scott Wilson boiling the hides in his Ford Power in an unknown light blue fueler. Could be the McGregor Outer Parts machine. At Cayuga, throws the shoot yeah. a little early. I'm thinking this is Jack Swanson and the ex Brothers Brown machine. Yeah. Jack put that car in a container, sent it to England for a car show. When it came back, it was in multiple pieces, so it does not exist. Another one of that looks like a 427 SOHC fueler. One of the Lane, Lane. cousins. 255 Chevys. There's the second one right there. Midnight Special and Roadrunner was what they were called. Nice willies. Bob Linder and the CC Rider. 287 cubic inches of blown small block. Roadrunner up against a tire frying GTO. This is mid 60s action a little later. Super Boss Dragway. Yeah, Dennis Clark, Mr. Pee Wee in the Anglia. If you don't know who that is, we'd you love to know. know. Boiling the hides down the Cayuga 1320. Here's our light blue jobby again. That, it looked like Herbie Rogers. Greeny Brothers on the far side there in the Canadian. Yeah, they're Canadian, an unmistakable car, beautiful car. This is in the pits, but not a Cayuga. St. Thomas, I'm thinking. Looks like St. Thomas pits, a trailblazer. That's a uh, seen car a few times now, and oh yeah. Uh, C. Gasser, yes. he's been around from Sarnia. There's a gent having some fun. Notice some nice Chevelles in the background. There's one of our Lane family. This is Bob B. Lane. That's the D. Gasser, the Roadrunner. The C. Gasser. Their uh, father, of one of them anyway, is uh, a real estate agent, J. N. Lane. And he helps with the costs, I'm sure. D. Gas. Bob B. Lane and the D. Gasser. Red the interior on that building. Runner. Yeah, nice. The Midnight Special being a C. Gasser. Straight axle on the front, the only way to fly. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, like button, notification button, every button you can find. Leave a comment if you like. Remember, hook hard, go straight, don't be late, and may your God bless you. See you next week.